This is the Rare Black MacBook, and it is one of the coolest laptops Apple has ever made. This is the rare Black MacBook, or the Blackbook, as it is affectionately known to fans. The Black MacBook was never a success. In fact, it barely sold at all compared to the white MacBook it was marketed alongside. Despite its failure to catch on, this MacBook is not only significant, but one of my favorite MacBooks of all time. To start, let's go over my unit. This is a mid-2007 black MacBook with completely maxed out specs. My model has the 2.16GHz Core 2 Duo T7400, the only processor available on this year for the black MacBook. My model also has the upgraded 2GB of RAM, a $150 option, and the positively massive 200GB hard drive. That's a $100 option. Cosmetically, this MacBook has the same exact design as the white MacBook, but this all black finish looks so nice and sleek. I never really liked the look of the white MacBook. It really didn't age well. Mainly, its shiny plastic finish was easily scratched, cracked, and dirty. The palm rest would stain and chip, the keyboard would wear down, and within a few years, the thing would look terrible. This MacBook, however, still looks good to this day. Unlike the white MacBook, this one uses a soft touch matte finish, which looks really nice with its all black keyboard, palm rest, and screen bezel. The only thing on the exterior of the case that isn't black is the stark white Apple logo shining brightly on the back of the display, and the glowing sleep indicator on the front. It really is a badass looking machine. So why didn't the black book catch on? Despite Apple's promotional material that showed the black MacBook side by side with the standard white model, the two were by no means on a level playing field. The black MacBook cost significantly more than the similarly specced white model. See, the white MacBook with the same exact processor cost $1,300 and shipped with 1GB of RAM and a 120GB hard drive, while the black MacBook rang up an extra $200 and only added 40GB of hard drive space. For many people, the black MacBook just wasn't worth an extra $200 just for 40 gigs and a black casing. Because of this weird price disparity, the black MacBook didn't really have a place in Apple's lineup. In 2007, the MacBook started at just $1,100, meaning Apple was certainly targeting it as an entry-level device. However, my fully specced out version rang up $1,750 in 2007. That's $2,100 bucks adjusted for inflation. Despite its high price tag, this was still the entry-level MacBook with a plastic design. For many people, it just wasn't worth that kind of money. Now, onto the performance of this machine, and it certainly isn't as badass as it looks. This machine is from 2007, and as such, we can expect that it's not going to perform as well as newer devices, obviously. Despite my best efforts, I was not able to find a reliable way to get Yosemite or El Capitan running on this machine, so we are limited to Lion for the operating system. Despite this limitation, the machine still runs pretty well for its age, scoring 97 in Cinebench, a score not too far behind my 2009 MacBook Pro. There are a couple things which hold this machine back, however. The first is the lack of backlit keyboard. Because the keys and the palm rest are all black, the keys simply disappear in low light settings, so typing in unlit rooms is likely going to pose a challenge. The second problem is the display. While 13-inch MacBook Pros used the same 1280x800 resolution for quite a few years, 
Their panels are much better. They have better saturation, brightness, and viewing angles than the panel used in this MacBook. This panel has flat colors, the Mac's brightness isn't really bright enough, and the screen washes out completely if tilted off axis even slightly. It really does feel like an entry level display, especially for 2007, and as such it really doesn't hold up too well in 2018. But by far my biggest gripe with this machine is the trackpad. Oh, how I've been spoiled by glorious multi-touch trackpads. The old clicky button style trackpad on this machine is just bad by today's standards, and I had an aneurysm trying to navigate macOS without my trusty gestures. Also, as is common on these trackpads, the clicky button actually got jammed up after 11 years of use and doesn't give the proper tactile click sensation, which caused me much frustration. It doesn't feel as clicky as even Apple's recent diving board mechanism trackpads, and it really takes you out because you can't tell when you're clicking or not. This made user experience a nightmare because it was really hard to tell when the machine was actually registering a click. I didn't have any feedback, and despite my soft spot for its looks, I can't deny the MacBook's lack of usual Apple build quality. You can tell this guy is not put together like a unibody Apple laptop. But every time I get frustrated by this machine's numerous pitfalls, I take a step back and I look at this machine and all is forgiven. I really can't explain why I've always been so fascinated with the black MacBook. Maybe it's the rareness, the allure of mystery, of seeing something out of the ordinary. Back when this machine first came out, I'd see them in public and think, oh wow, someone's actually using that. They were just so uncommon, even when they were new. They're even rarer today, and it's just something that you don't see all the time. Most Apple laptops have a certain sense of ubiquity. Whatever a new device comes out, you start to see it everywhere. Even the pink MacBook that came out in 2016 is not particularly rare. But this machine never really caught on. So for that reason, it really does have an air of mystery to it. And really, it's not all bad. The MacBook has a lot going for it. For one thing, this is one of the last MacBooks with easily replaceable batteries before Apple stuck them inside the devices. Here's a fun fact, mine happens to have its original OEM Apple battery with just 43 cycles. And while we're in here, a small access door can be removed, which allows us to access the hard drive and RAM for upgrades. I imagine if you put 4 or 6 gigabytes of RAM and a cheap SSD, this thing would make a badass Linux device. Maybe that's what I'll do with this machine after I'm done with this video, who knows. Or maybe I'll keep it as it is, in its original state. A collector's item, a relic of a bygone era. You have to remember that Apple at this time had a bright white aesthetic going on. All of their devices were white and silver. Even their ads had plain white backdrops. Hello, I'm a Mac. Hold up, here I come. Whoa, PC? Yeah, it's all this trial software. They pack my hard drive full of it, all these programs that don't do very much unless you buy the whole thing or are just plain useless. Ugh, really slows me down. Everything in this time was white. That was kind of the Apple aesthetic. This MacBook stuck out boldly in the all-white lineup, and it suffered the consequences. Though it lived from 2006 to 2008 with the first-generation MacBook, it became clear quite quickly that the black MacBook just didn't have a market. And in 2009, it became history. Despite its commercial failure, I always loved the look of this design. And I'll tell you what, I still do. They say not to meet your heroes. The black MacBook was certainly something that always had a mystery, a sense of being just out of reach. But now that I own one, I have to say it's not a letdown. This machine really is as cool as it always looked when I was young. It may be a little sad to see this machine a little old and anemic, but I still think it looks really nice to this day. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. The The Black MacBook has quite a fan base on the internet, and not gonna lie, I'm a little bit of a part of that fan base. I've always loved the look of this device, and I have to say I'm really hoping that Apple brings back an all-black computer. 
I think it would look really, really cool, especially with modern specs. But until that day, I guess I'll just have to make do with Space Gray, which is fine by me. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As usual, make sure to follow me on Twitter, at LukeMiani. Please consider joining my subreddit, and I will see you guys in the next video.